Hey, everybody. Welcome to Game Day View, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Patrick Claybaugh here with my great friends, Greg Rosenthal and Cynthia Freeland, who had great week fours. They both went 13-3. and three. Mm. I shot for the moon and landed on my face at 9-7. and seven. So let's <laughs> take a look at the overall standings after I went to the miserable fest. Uh, go ahead and put that crown on one Greg Rosenthal. Uh, Cynthia and I are standing at 39-25, and 25, but on the way. Greg, do you feel great? No, I, I don't, because I know what's coming. Like, sometimes you make a pick so bad that you should get two losses for it. Okay, yeah. Thir 13 and three, but one of those three was not like the others. Uh, let's take a look back at last week. It's seven points is way too much. It's so much, I'm offended enough to pick the Patriots to win outright. I think Bill Belichick is gonna cook up a game plan. Jones just can't find it. Comes back across the field. This time he pays the price. Deron Bland, pick six. I think Bill Belichick is gonna cook. And I think the Patriots defense, which has been playing well, really stymies Dallas. Pulls off the big upset. The Patriots are keeping this game within seven points. I want the Patriots to make my mom, Debbie Rosenthal, a huge Patriots fan smile. They're not going to lose by seven. 38 to three, Greg. I mean, you had to put my mom's name in there. I'm, I'm so glad I got to make uh, all the producers, you know, feel alive this week by burying <laughs> me. But check out the standings right now. How about that? There we go. We, we finally got it. That's what it takes to make Greg feel good about wearing that crown. Uh, the Cowboys, who we did not pick last week, are in the game of the year, perhaps, Sunday night between the Cowboys and the 49ers. Before we dive into that, let's flash back to last year's NFC Divisional round with time wounding down. The Cowboys trail by seven oh. with one last shot. Zeke snapped the ball, got run over. They did some weird stuff. Uh, the hook and ladder got blown up before it could ever get going. The 49ers won 19 to 12. They've knocked Dallas out of the playoffs two years in a row. So here we go. It's a classic NFC rivalry. The undefeated 49ers playing host of the three and one Cowboys Sunday night. Are you picking against Dallas again, Greg? I am. Am. And that was painful to watch a man, Kellen Moore, their coordinator, lose his job as that play call was happening. I think it was right there. The 49ers are tougher in terms of their play calling offensively, even with Mike McCarthy calling the play. So it's 24 to 21. I think the Cowboys thread the needle. But where do the 49ers win? It's over the middle of the field. Where do the Cowboys defense lose? It's over the middle of the field. You got Brandon Ayuk. Going deep, you got them on the shorter routes, and I think they look at the linebacker position. Nobody is better than Kyle Shanahan on putting a bullseye on these opposing linebackers and saying, are you really going to put them in pass coverage against George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk and Debo? <laughs> Damon Clark, Landon, Leighton Van Der Esch, good players, can't cover these guys. I think they get enough yardage over the middle of the field, and they get another win, but it's going to be a good one. I think that I'm saying this correctly, but my reason for a seven-point win for the Niners is the inverse of yours, meaning mm. I think that the ability of the defense for the 49ers to stop the middle of the field, to shut down the middle of the field, is actually what makes a huge mark in this one. And specifically, that man right there, that beast right there, uh, number 54 in your program, uh, number I'm going to crush your quarterback soul, your running back soul, and don't try to pass over the middle third of the field because for his position, he has 15 more pass breakups, defended passes, any sort of, you're not going to catch the ball pass than any other guy to his position since he entered the league. So wow. it's just that it's the inverse. You talked about, is that the inverse? Reverse? That, that inverse, is, whatever. you're the math I whiz. think it's the inverse, but yes. Inverse. You're counting with your fingers earlier. I did. I'm, I counted on my, I don't know how to do days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is it four days or five? No one knows. Yeah. No one. Do you count the day? There, there's so much consternation. And, <laughs> so yes, confusing. I agree with Greg. I agree with Cynthia. The 49ers are very good up the middle of the field. Fred Warner, clearly one of the best players in the NFL. I am taking the Dallas Cowboys here. 25-24. and 24. Like I'm focused on the edges because I feel really good about this Dallas defense <laughs> where they've uh, seen a test uh, on the ground from Arizona that they failed. That Dan Quinn came right back out. The Patriots run game got stifled. This isn't New England, but Demarcus Lawrence is playing very good football right now. Micah Parsons gets so much attention. Uh, Lawrence makes the play to win this game, in my view. He's generating Ooh. pressure on 20% of his rushes this season. That's his best since 2018. But because number 11's running around, flying around, making plays, being deep in Hawaii, we don't talk about Tank that much. Tank's a lot. Uh, tanks, Tank, <laughs> I got you. Uh, give me a win. Cause, cause we're trying Can you to, bark again, Greg? That was... <laughs> Let's go. Straight back. <laughs> I didn't even know Greg. I thought that was the sound effect. No, it was very, Greg. <laughs> very good bark.
uh, by Greg. Let, let's uh, look at some points. Some score fest, perhaps. The odds makers think that there's going to be 52 and a half points, perhaps, between Kansas City and Minnesota. Some other high scoring games projected, including the Jags, Bills, the Dolphins playing host to the Giants, and then the game that we just talked about on Sunday Night Football. But as we get into the time for the drive to excellence, presented by <laughs> Mercedes Benz, Eagles and the Rams have the second highest over under of the week at 50 and a half. The Eagles still unbeaten. Cooper Cup going to play now. Are you expecting fireworks, Cynthia? I mean, I'm expecting fireworks. I have 28 Boom. to 23, which would be more than 50 and a half total points in this one. But I want to point out Tyler Higby. Why? Because if you're looking at where the Philadelphia Eagles have been deficient, you can see it in fantasy points. They give up like the second most fantasy points per game to the tight end position. But also when you're watching it on the field, it's that level of the defense where there's just some space and that tight end can tuck right in there. We all talk about all these other splashy names. We did talk about Cooper Cup returning and of course Puka Nakua has been excellent. But give you had a little love for Tyler Higby. He just signed a big deal. Yeah. And for good reason because he's a very efficient and effective guy helping to keep Matthew Stafford throwing. I did actually pick the Eagles, but I wanted to talk about Higby. Team captain. I know that's going to make two of us talking about the team we picked to lose. <laughs> I have the Eagles winning. I do think the Rams thread that needle, keep it close, 33 to 31 Rams. I think it's going to be, or Eagles rather, I think it's going to be a score fest because Cooper Cup is back and by all accounts doing everything at practice and He's going to fit with Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell and Higby so well. This is a top 10 offense without Cooper Cup. And I think Cup's going to take a lot of those intermediate routes. And Puka might go deeper down the field now. And he was really drafted as a guy that can do that. Tutu Atwell will see more one-on-one -on -one coverage. I think perfect as a number three type of role player. And I look at this Eagles defense meh this year. Not so good in the red zone. Giving up some big plays in the passing game. And so I think the Rams can keep up in a shootout. I'm pretty sure Bradley Roby has been practicing in the slot too, which means he like came up off the street and is like going to be starting in the right. slot against this offense. So they lost their starting slot. Huh? They lost their backup slot. Huh? You got to say that. You're what? picking the Eagles still. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. tempted by the Rams as well, but I, I think there's points. I don't think there's that many points because all the problems that this Eagles defense has had, and a lot of it is just not necessarily being able to duplicate all the things that they did last year, which was incredible. But there's one thing that's new on this defense that is playing very well, and that is not a thing. It's person. It's Jalen Carter, <laughs> uh, the rookie out of Georgia. Um, I, I think they eventually make the play to win the game. Uh, Jalen Carter is making a push for the rookie of the year. He's already getting the attention, double teamed on 56% of his pass rushes in the top five of the league, and he's winning. He's got the second most pressures when doubled in the league, trailing only Micah Parsons. Wow. Uh, the Rams line still has issues. We're watching Joe Noteboom come in and out of practice. Not he's sure out. How he's things out. Are going. out of the game now. I, no I've still got the, the, the Eagles, but again, a very close game, as we all have. Um, mm -hmm. Tremendous respect for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, still picking them to lose, so meme us here, <laughs> uh, Rams fans. Moving on, the London games continue this Sunday, and we've got a huge AFC matchup. Looking forward to it. This will be the meeting between two of the best young quarterbacks in the league. This is how a Oh, that's got to get you pumped. Sunday morning football back on NFL Network, bigger than ever. Live from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, Trevor Lawrence and the Jags taking on Josh Allen and the Bills. Rise, shine, and watch a full day of football. Sunday, October 8th, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, only on NFL Network, also streaming on NFL Plus. So let's dive into this matchup across the Atlantic Ocean. Jags and Bills. Von Miller says there's a 94.5% chance uh, that he plays. <laughs> It's some amount of math. Uh, Greg, how do you feel about that? Uh, that's a lot of math for me to handle. I, I just know that the rest of the league messed up. I have the Bills winning this game. I don't think it's that close, 30 to 21. The, the rest of the league let the Bills' offensive line turn outstanding. Like, all this time, Josh Allen's been cooking you up, and he hasn't even had good pass protection. He hasn't even had a good running game. Suddenly, this line is more or less dominating the opposing pass rush. And I just love 
the way that Josh Allen is hanging in the pocket and not running unless he has to. When he has to, he can ball out. But on all these throws, you're just seeing him have time, and I think you've seen the maturation. And I look at this Jaguar secondary, and yeah, they've got a couple good players, but overall, I don't think they have the depth to hang with a well-protected Josh Allen. I do like Andre Sisco. He's great for that secondary, but I'm with you. I have exactly the same margin as you, but I have a few fewer points. I have 28 to 19 in this matchup. And to go hand in glove with what you said, it's really James Cook that I want to mm. outline here because we haven't been able to talk about the Bills having a run game since like 2016, literally. <laughs> and that's really interesting. And it's also another wrinkle that on these early downs, like this will prevent some Josh Allen on Josh Allen crime, which we don't want. And then we'll also help keep Josh Allen, the Buffalo one, him to stay without an interception. So keeping the ball clean, keeping the, you know, everything on the ground and high probability passes, that has really been the recipe. And James Cook has really come into his own. And this is actually pretty fun, but in the first half of that game last week, you know who was a faster runner than Tyreek Hill? Who? James Cook. James wow. Cook. Mm -hmm. Next Gen Stats, he was, runner, he was a faster runner in the first half. Speak for yourself, though. I do want Josh Allen on Josh Allen crime. Yeah. No. Three sacks last year. Josh Allen I was the best Josh, Josh Allen no. in this game last year. It, it was the <laughs> guy who rushed Josh Allen, not the Josh Allen who Very confusing. I was tempted to pick the Jags in this one, but you, you, you meme us away. Uh, I've got the Buffalo Bills, but I do have the Jags to make this a close game because there's been a lot of questions about this Jags offense. What's going on? Is it Trevor? Why can't Travis Etienne get things going? I think it was mainly because Cam Robinson was out. He was uh, mm. facing mm -hmm. that PED uh, suspension, said he took something, didn't know what it was. Either way, <laughs> he's out until this game. Look back. This game against the Broncos last year, Cam Robinson blocked three people on that run. Travis Etienne had so much success running behind Cam Robinson. His yards per carry has fallen almost two full yards. Yikes. And so much of that can be attributed to Cam. I don't know how much and how well he's going to play early on, but I do think you can look at this Jags ground game and say they will certainly be better uh, than they were before coming into this game because 74 is back. So I've got the Bills, but in a close one, in a fun one. That you can watch again, go to plus.nfl.com, download. You can watch the game wherever you are. Uh, NFL Plus available for you. Coming up, Lamar and the Ravens are cooking. Can they keep things rolling Sunday against TJ Watt and the Steelers? Our picks for that battle in the AFC North. Coming up next. Obviously, Lamar Jackson has to be the most dangerous QB in the league, right? He's heating up. Lamar gets the snap. Throws it to the right, and the ball is caught by Andrews for a touchdown in the corner. Lamar's going to keep himself off the left side, cuts up the middle, and he has a touchdown. Lamar's going to dump it off to Andrews inside the 10, makes a move, and he gets into the end zone for a second touchdown on the day. Snap it. Jackson is shaking bait for the touchdown. Lamar has his second rushing touchdown of the day. Ouch. Lamar and the Ravens didn't have a problem with the top defense in the AFC North. Now it's the top two teams in the AFC North facing off in Pittsburgh, the Ravens and the Steelers. Odell says he expects to play. Who's winning this game, Greg? The Baltimore Ravens are whether Odell plays or not 20 to 6. And, yeah, that, that's a rough number to the Steelers' offense. Tough to watch. So let's talk about a fun offense, the Baltimore Ravens' offense. When they reach the red zone, they score. 15 trips to the red zone, 12 touchdowns. I'm going to do the math and say that's 80%. That's like, really that's good That's what math I would right get there, in right. math back in the day while Cynthia's getting straight A's. But in the NFL, 80% <laughs> in the red zone is amazing. And I think it speaks to what Todd Munkin is getting done. When they need to run, they can do it. And it's not as run heavy as it was before. They're calling design runs for Lamar judiciously. But when they do it, it's often in the red zone. And he's often scoring touchdowns like you see right here so I really love the way they're using everyone in their offense and I think it's only going to get better with Odell and maybe Rashad Bateman can get healthy one of these weeks either way love the Ravens in this game I'm with you on the Ravens this week I have 23-19 as my final score a little bit more optimistic for the Steelers than perhaps <laughs> my friend Greg over here but I want to talk about the Ravens defense specifically Kyle Hamilton. Why? Because he's been asked to do so much this year. There's been so many injuries to the lots of the other defensive backfield. And Kyle Hamilton, look at him, beast mode right there. When it comes to pass protection, he's allowing a sub 50. Get rid of it, Gardner. Pass her rating. Pass her rating. Kim. Like, you're almost better off throwing it into the ground than you are throwing it into Kyle Hamilton's coverage. So hats off to him. He's really stepped up in a massive position in just the second season. Like, this guy's great. 
Yeah, Mike McDonald and the rest of this team has got this Ravens defense playing pretty well right now. I have Baltimore, surprise, surprise, uh, 26 to 17. I also don't have super high hopes uh, for the Steelers offense, regardless of who plays quarterback. But if you're looking for a player uh, that might have more than 18 and a half receiving yards in this game, I think it's Jalen Warren. because. Uh, he, he plays for the team <laughs> that's least likely in the NFL to convert a third down through the air. But those yards still count. There was a first down that Jalen Warren got. What we got here on third down, third and about 12, J get J Jalen Are Warren. Is it's, this just a whole – you don't no, even have the winning. Converted. Is this a whole segment just to prove a weird point that Jalen Warren no. is not that efficient? No, I'm saying Jalen Warren's getting the ball on third down. Okay. It, it could I be third and I think he's saying that, like, this is the one – I think he's trying to bring up a high point, yeah. like a highlight. A more he's or trying less to highlight. 18 and a half receiving yeah, yards. Yeah, I, th right. I think yes. he definitely has more than 18 and a half receiving yards. Yes. Uh, the other team, their the offense is good. I, I'm a fan of Lamar Jackson, but one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the league right now is C.J. Stroud, and he's mm -hmm. got the Texans on a two-game win streak. Stroud, shotgun, motor in the backfield with him. C.J. gets the snap. C.J. throwing downfield and caught by Nico, 25-20. Breaks it back on 15, 10-5. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Stroud with more third down. Magic to the end zone. It is time for Pizza Pizza. Pre-game predictions delivered by Little Caesars. <laughs> C.J. Stroud is yet to throw an interception in his young NFL career. That is not a jinx, Cynthia. I don't know. You are Mr. Jinx. You keep doing this to me. The Texans take it on the Falcons Sunday. Besides belief that I control the universe, uh, what do you like here, Cynthia? Well, listen, when C.J. Stroud throws that interception. It's on me. Looking at you, buddy. Okay. But look, I have Atlanta winning this one. 23-20. to 20. One. Atlanta is pretty healthy by all standards in the NFL. And also so is Houston. They're getting potentially some of their O-linemen back. But when I'm looking at Atlanta and I look at their strength, it's the run game. Probably Bajan Robinson, mm. but also Tyler Algier. And if Cordero Patterson is available, they will probably somehow work him in. And that is a weakness of this Houston Texans defense. The defense is good in the pass, but defending the, you know, when you're trying to pass against them. But the run is an area where they're a little more weak. And I'm looking at what the Falcons have done in their early scripted downs. And they've been too, like, wild. And they're just going to go back to run the football. They're not going to try to do, like, fancy schmancy stuff right up front because that's what's been working the second half to get them back into games, not being too crazy to start the game off in those scripted, you know, first 20 plays. Like, I, I think this is a big-time mismatch at quarterback when you just look at the two quarterbacks. Of course. Right. But I also think it's a mismatch if you look at the weapons because Nico Collins and the Texans are going to get this done 24 to 17. Ooh. What, what is it that, that Shaq said? Uh, it's like, I owe Nico Collins an apology. I was not familiar with your game, young man. Like, I thought he was good, but I didn't think he was this good. This guy is 6'4 and making guys miss in the open field. I was trying to think of a comp for him, and I don't really have him. He's a, he's a number one. I, he needed C.J. Stroud to show up, and he needed to develop awesome. as a pro to, like, fully – unlock but Nico Collins is a wide receiver one looking forward to him versus AJ Terrell on Sunday but I, I'm all in on Nico and CJ yeah he's had three of the best games in his career uh, all playing with CJ Stroud this year and let's say even if uh, I'm taking the Houston Texans as well even if you what? Uh, say that AJ Terrell makes things difficult uh, for for the for uh, Nico and that passing attack they've got other options I'm looking on the other side some real problems got exposed for this Falcons offense over in London against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they're going up against a team that can really rush the passer. Their passing defense is good, including Will Anderson. The rookie right now is third in the league in pressures that come under two and a half seconds. I, I don't mm. see if there's a situation where CJ does connect with Nico or Tank Dell or any one of these weapons where Atlanta gets into situations where they need to throw the ball. I, I just don't see it uh, from this Falcons offense. I'm going with the Houston Texans. So you're giving me a prime number, Ooh. and it's in Atlanta. Yeah. And Atlanta has to do favor. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. I'll take it. But I'll Atlanta's also it. coming home from London, and pers I know this personally, and you guys will see in week seven. The performance just isn't the same the week after London. They'll, they'll be sleeping. That means he's going to London This next guy week. London's. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Just so London you know, he's going to come back with like a British accent like Madonna. Uh, coming up, the AFC South is up for grabs, <laughs> and it's gotten spicy. <laughs> Anthony Richardson and company playing host to King Henry. Game picks for Titans and Colts is coming up. <laughs> Rolling, throwing, Tannehill. Yeah. Touchdown, Titans. Henry, I should say, is the man who rolls and throws. All that movement just freaked me out. <laughs> 
fun fact, the Bengals called timeout before that play, and they still ran it, and they still scored a touchdown. The <laughs> Titans going to Indy to face Anthony Richardson and the Colts. Jonathan Taylor expected to play. Does that shift your pick, Greg? Who's winning the game? It makes me less confident in the Titans, but I'm still taking the Titans to win this game 23-20, to and it hit me watching them last week. To think about 2021, it wasn't that long ago, 2021, just two years ago. Let's watch some footage uh, from that season. Wow, Derrick Henry, he's good, still on this Titans team. Ryan Tannehill, still mm. on this Titans team. How about we throw in a little defensive players? Kevin Bayard, mm. Jeffrey Simmons, mm. Danico Autry. You know how many teams finished ahead of the Titans back in 2021? Zero. They were the number one team. Nick Westbrook Aquina, he's still around. The bones of this team that won a lot of games and started seven and three a year ago, it's still right there. And they're kind of annoying. You're just like, won't you go away, Titans? I know the Colts <laughs> wanted to, but they just find ways to win. They're well coached. They have all these guys that are used to winning. I think they do it again. Well, I, my score is actually, you were talking about 2021. Well, my score is 21 to 20. I too had the Titans winning this mm. game. But by one point only. I'm a little concerned with injuries on both sides of this matchup. However, the one thing that I do feel good about, the Titans run D, especially if Jonathan Taylor's back. Like he said himself earlier this week, it's been like over 290 days since he's played. That's not a really good recipe to get full Jonathan Taylor back in action, especially against a run defense with such, such dramatic splits against their passing defense. So I'm looking at this opportunity here, and this is where Vrabel is going to say, "Okay, I just this is this is where he's like a little mastermind, and he could, or a big mastermind, and he he's a <laughs> large, very him, large very, man, he's a big man. He's a very large man. Like we're he's not little, but like he's." He's a mastermind when it comes to run defense, <laughs> like a puppeteer. Just moving players around on his on his chessboard mm -hmm. and playing. I, I've got checkmate uh, Indianapolis Colts. Ooh, what? It's also hey a now. close game for me. 24-23. I'm fine with the home team uh, as the the Titans' pass rush was able to feast on Joe Burrow, who was hurt and has trouble moving. But uh, Anthony Richardson as a rookie, is managing the pocket so well right now, and he's using it to take shots down the field. 12.4 air yards per attempt against the defense that feasted on an offense that couldn't go deep but has struggled there. Everywhere else has this Titans secondary in mm. terms of defending the deep pass. I think the Colts are able to get some shots. The Titans offense still having its a fair share of issues. Maybe they get uh, those 23 points, a lot of King Henry. But down the stretch, Anthony Richardson making plays, and that's why I've got the Colts winning this game. Fun I game. Feel, I feel great. I, I want to watch the game. I also want to get some quick picks. So let's mm -hmm. fire up some quick picks. The Carolina Panthers have not won a single game. They're going to Motown. Cynthia, are you going to pick your Lions two weeks in a row? Yeah. Yes, of course. I, I have a 10 point win for the Lions 29 to 19 in this matchup because of the run game. It is so poetic, especially if you're a Lions fan, because I think in some like alternate universe, the last year's Panthers are still running on the Lions. <laughs> and now this year's Lions are going to run all over the Panthers. If you watched that game last year, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the game where we will really see have the Lions solved some of their run game defense concerns. If not, that could be bad for me. However, mm. I, I believe, I believe. A My true revenge game. game. Yeah, this, revenge against this, your memories. Because they're, they're in the playoffs. Revenge against your memories. If they can keep uh, Carolina running to just like 150 yards, <laughs> uh, they would be in the playoffs. I think last year was like 150,000, so it would be like 1,000x better. Uh, elsewhere, the G-Men headed down to South Florida to take on the Dolphins. Greg, is there any chance Miami loses this football game? No, but I think it could be a lot of points. 40 to 27, so I like that over-under. And it's partly because the Miami defense hasn't been great this uh, year. I asked Cynthia for the model's take on the Dolphins, and she points out they are not higher than 25th against the run or the pass. There's really nothing they do well. They are 26 in points per drive allowed. So I actually think they could unlock Danny Dimes a little bit in a game where the Giants will be playing from behind. And there's just points for everyone. Fantasy points, too. Love it. Um, question for you on this one. Yeah. The Chase Claypool trade. We have to talk about it for a second. Like, how do you, like, be angry to one team? Wait, wait, I guess there are two teams. And then end up on the Dolphins. Like, that's wild. That's a wild. That's wild. Failing up. Good for that's him. What you call it. I did. Actually. Coach Mike scheming things Good up. Good for them. And, and yeah. Things figured out. That's where we got a battle of one and three teams going down to the desert. The Bengals at the Cardinals. Cynthia before the season. This game would have been a no-brainer. Are you leaning a particular way now? I don't feel great about it, but I have Cincinnati winning 25-21. 
I'm still a believer because I think that this is where Joe Mixon becomes really valuable. When I watch all of the past games and all of the different formations and configurations that this defense in Arizona has done, they've been really good in the first half. But in the second half, when there's adjustments made, things get a little bit more dicey. And that's where I think that this Bengals team, with this amount of talent, it's like surplus talent. They've got talent for day, but we haven't seen it. So I think yeah. we start to see it now, especially because – I think that they now know it's 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 kind of make or break time in the desert. I'm 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 uh, I'm Team Josh Dobbs at this yes. point. Yes, right? I love Josh, Josh Dobbs. Dobbs. If we were wondering like who has the Geno Smith style burst onto the scene season, maybe maybe it's Josh Dobbs. He's got moxie. He's got sneaky athleticism. Uh, I don't think it's sneaky. Gets, I see it. Yeah, he's just athletic. Right. And uh, he gets to play the Bengals, who just, I'm out he's on sneaky the Sneaky athletic in Tennessee, too. Which is which is the case for it. Nobody's sneaky athletic. Nope. Uh, these guys come in, they run they run 40 times, they lift weights. We, I'm sneaky. No, you're sneaky athletic. You're actually the definition athletic. of, you, I mean, we did those. Can you do more push-ups for us? No. No? No such thing as sneaky athletic, just bad. People who are bad at evaluating other people's athleticism. Coming up, <laughs> our favorite prop bets for Jags, Bills in London. Who's craving some fish and chips, Greg? Sunday morning football is back on NFL Network and bigger than ever live from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. Trevor Lawrence and the Jags taking on Josh Allen and the Bills rise, shine, and watch a full day of football Sunday, October 8th at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, only on NFL Network and streaming on NFL Plus. What, what, what a, what a track. Regal. Regal music. What a, what a game. It was Regal. Save it. Uh, God, it's time for more or less <laughs> as we get into the Jags Bills in London. Uh, there's a lot of star power in this one, so let's get into some props as we get to more or less uh, as we, uh, a game that could be a playoff preview, mm. perhaps. Cynthia, Josh Allen, more or less than two passing touchdowns? Um, well, I have two forecasts, but it's like 2.22. So that's more than two. So I'm going to go with, with more. I think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. All right. Looking forward to those point two touchdowns. Greg, yes. uh, Trevor Lawrence, more or less super specific, 246 passing. Oh, that is – I'm going way, way oh. up. Because either they're going to cook – uh, the Bills defensively. I don't think that's going to happen. Or they fall down in the game, and Trevor Lawrence is well equipped with all these different weapons to play catch up. So I think it's a game that they're going to want to try to stretch out, not run the ball as much, and maybe he goes over 300. Oh, Let's go. Let's 300 go. for Trevor. I mean, plus they're, they're going to be rested. Is a big deal. They're there all week. They got to chill. They're just checking yeah. out. The quality bookshop. There's a I mean, lot of missing pieces on that Bills defense. They're acclimated. Although the Bills came midway through the week and took their hotel, which is a baller move. It's kind of well, easy. Though. How does that also, happen? Also, a revenge, I don't understand. Revenge motivation. Uh, I'm going to do Stefan Diggs more or less than six receptions, and I don't Whoa. even need that. I don't need it. God save the screen uh, because you're going more. <laughs> you got to go back to December 21st, another blowout. The last time he had fewer than six catches. Same things happened last week. Why did he have fewer than six catches? He didn't need to play. He already had three touchdowns. He's running down the field by himself. The Fangio and company couldn't deal with him. I, I think six catches is easy, easy for Stefan Diggs in this one. Let's get back to you, Cynthia. Well, James Cook have more or less than 73 scrimmage. Oh, I'm going to do the Patrick. I don't even need oh, that red one. I mean, God's game a little half hard green. There. Yeah, no, look, 73, I think that we already told you about James Cook and how he is a really integral part of this early down offense specifically. Also, his use in the pass catching game, there's so many different options. So if that Josh Allen on Josh Allen crime that we talked about potentially happen even starts to happen, just, just check it down to... James Cook. Right. The scrimmage we'll yards scrimmage is where, yards. where you win here because I think the Jags' rush defense has been one of the better groups in the league, even without Devon Hamilton. And I, I would be worried. This is going to be a, a really good test if the Bills can run the ball even against the Jags. But that's the thing about Cook. It's like his brother. Remember when we thought James Cook was like 80% of Dalvin Cook? Maybe it's the opposite. It's, Maybe it's, it's the reverse. inverse. The other now way. It's the reverse. The, the, uh, the, pass, it's the way. passage of time, it, it comes for us all. Uh, <laughs> you talked about the Bills uh, ground game. What about the Jags ground uh, I'm game? I'm going under, <laughs> and you've challenged me here. Let's go. Oh, oh no. 85, <laughs> no, uh, 65 no, rushing yards for Travis Etienne. Yeah. I'm just – I think they're going to be trailing. Patrick, you mentioned Cam Robinson's returning. That's encouraging, but it hasn't been a great uh, rushing attack this year. I think Etienne's run the ball well. Sometimes you can see – that a player's improved, even if the team around him. And right now, everything is so condensed. So many teams 
are not believing that the Jags are going to throw the ball deep. Everyone's around the line of scrimmage. And like I said, I think they're going to be playing catch up in this game. So it might be ETN more as a receiver than as a rusher. No, oh, you think that they're playing catch up. Yes. Which leads me as I get into Calvin Ridley more or less than four receptions. Again, catch up. Again, I, I don't I don't have my my less finger. This is all more um, because you, you might wonder, well, Calvin really didn't finish with a whole bunch of catches last week. But he's still getting loaded up with targets. So it's, I think, considering the fact that the Bills are going to store, maybe before you finish your cup on Sunday morning, uh, mm. he, he might have four receptions. Second half starts, you get those that other reception, start feeling pretty good. But I, I just feel great. I'm, I'm excited that we get a chance to watch this game. It's one of the best London games ever. Yeah, and no Greg Rousseau, so the pass rush will be a little bit diminished. And obviously, Travis White, they're going to have to figure that out. There's a whole bunch of other people in the injury report, too, so I I like that one. I'm just a little wary of Calvin Ridley right now. Four receptions, fine. We'll, We'll see. But the offense ran much smoother, I think, through Ingram and Kirk last week. And I think that was purposeful because they, they went to Ridley a lot in weeks two and three. It didn't quite work out. He seemed to be in his own head. Sometimes when you're the number one guy, you got all that money, all that attention. It's a lot. I think the Jags have figured something out. And folks, if you want to see the results there, Ooh, uh, be there sure to watch that Jags perfect Bills timing. this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Also streaming on NFL Plus. A lot of fireworks in this one live from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. Cannot wait. When we return, it's our boy J-Lo. Got a date with the Raiders on Monday night. Will he redeem himself after last week's beatdown by the Lions? Our picks. Next. Welcome to NFL Plus, where you can stream live, local, and primetime games on your mobile device, listen to live game audio, and stream full game replays. You can also watch NFL Network, home to eight exclusive live games this season, and NFL Red Zone live every Sunday during the regular season through your pay TV provider or with NFL Plus. Let's go! For a limited time only, you can get 50% off a yearly subscription. Go to plus.nfl.com to sign up today. Thanks, Scott. It's time for Pizza Pizza pregame predictions delivered by Little Caesars. Monday night, the Packers and the Raiders in Las Vegas. Jimmy G has cleared the league's concussion protocol, expected to play. What happens in this game, Cynthia? Um, I still think Green Bay wins. Ah. 23 to 22. We're still waiting information on whether or not Devontae Adams is going to be playing, but he's on the injury. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that. It kind of doesn't matter either way for my score. When I'm looking at Christian Watson's return, again, he's on the injury report too. It does open up the field quite a bit. J-Lo, as it were. (laughs) Greg does not like J-Lo. Greg does not like I mean, she's an icon. We really need to do another one? Just get more creative. Okay, well, I, I, you think of something while I finish talking, but ultimately <laughs> Christian Watson's return creates more space and gives more opportunities for Jordan Love, whatever his new nickname is, to be efficient. I, I like the Packers in this one as well. I have Green Bay winning 26 uh, to 24 on the basis of their defense and their pass rush. We saw Khalil Mack come in in the revenge game, give this Raiders uh, team all kinds of problems. And Rashawn Gary coming back from this injury at one point was getting pressures on 30% of his rushes. Wow. So good as he works his way back, hopefully to being fully healthy, gets an extra day of rest for the Monday night game. I see him providing a lot of pressure and being enough to push in Green Bay over the edge in this one. I don't see how you can be that confident in either one of these teams. I, I'm going My one point win really inspires confidence. Okay, right. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going Raiders. I, let's just do it. Who knows? Like, let's see if Devontae Adams plays. I would flip my pick if Devontae Adams is out. Uh, there you go. See, I was doing my just Greg. Just yeah. like, I don't know. Uh, but I do know one of the best pass rushers in the league, Max Crosby, is in this game. And it's Amazing. He's kind of feeling like Miles Garrett in the last few years in Cleveland, where one great pass rusher does not mean the whole team's good. And yet, he might be the best pass rusher in the league right there with Parsons and Garrett. He is tied for the league lead in pressures. He wrecked that game and he just needs a little more help. And I and I hate to be so vague about it, but doesn't it just feel like both these teams should be two and three? Mm-hmm. The, the Packers don't feel like a three and t- two team. They don't deserve it, so I'm going Raiders. Well, and look, you have to remember the only say, the counter I'd give you to the Max Crosby is the number of motions and pre snap tricks that they play really helps keep a guy like Max Crosby at bay when you don't have a secondary that's quite as strong to back it up. All right, so we'll see how this game comes out Monday night. Let's uh, get a look at some scores that uh, we don't necessarily think are going to be that high. These are the lowest 
over unders, uh, according to FanDuel, oh, as of 10 6. And got Yikes. that game going on in Pittsburgh as well. But there's one game that kind of sneaks out to us on here, and it's two offenses that had really bad weeks uh, last week. Those are the Saints and the Panthers. Had one of the lowest over unders, the second lowest over under of the week. As we get into some more quick picks, will New England re redeem themselves after disappointing you last week, Greg? I think they will. I don't think anyone's scoring much in this game. 16 to 12. I like <laughs> way lower than that under because these teams are hoping for field goals. The Saints are running the all field goal offense. Derek Carr's back there on third and nines and just dumping the ball down to Alvin Kamara. And you think, oh, well, he, he's hurt. I mean, there's no pressure there. That's where you need a first down late or a touchdown late in the game on third and long. And everything is just a dump off. Patriots would be happy to get to 16. You know the last time they scored three touchdowns was? When? It was more than a year ago, Cynthia. Wow. More than a year ago, three I was touchdowns. so young then. We all, we all were. Uh, we, we've been aged by watching I mean, just, both of these offenses. You've got all these receivers, New Orleans. Go down the field. This is the week they should do it. But I don't think they will. I think Belichick will have Carr a little scrambling. Uh, that's kind of the problem for me, too. That's why I, have, I also have an incredibly low-scoring game, 13 and 10. <laughs> uh, they would love to go down the field. Love to see Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave running it. But they can't necessarily protect uh, Derek Carr. When they do get the protections, uh, the, the design isn't necessarily uh, what it should be, perhaps. Uh, it's just a low-scoring game from a couple of offenses, Cynthia, that uh, kind of need to figure some things out. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. It's bad. I mean, it's bad out here. All right, so it's bad in the streets. There are some people who may have recently started paying attention to the Kansas City Chiefs. They're a good football team going to Minnesota to face the Vikings. What do we see here, Cynthia? Well, go up and watch all the different areas. You can watch videos where that show how Taylor Swift has put Travis Kelsey on the map because it's really <laughs> funny. She really put him on the map, but. I'm going to put Isaiah Pacheco on the map here in a 29 <laughs> to 21 win. Why? Because I don't think we're talking enough about him. He's been more in every single game, more explosive, increasing his number of yards after the catch, yards after the, the initial contact, his yards before catch. They're using him in all these different formations, and that's what the Chiefs do so well. They keep you guessing with who, what, when, where, and how. And he's going to be continuously doing this, especially in a game where I have a game script being very favorable for Kansas City. So yeah. just keep, keep going good. Trade for him in fantasy. Right. It's one of the reasons I love the NFL because these teams show up year after year. You think you know the Chiefs. This Chiefs team is way different. They totally can different. They run the ball yeah. whenever they need to, and they're going to need to because Rasheed Rice might be their best wide receiver. <laughs> really might be. But the defense is better, and I think that's how you attack this Minnesota defense as well. They want to mix up a lot of games and pressures. Uh, just run at them. Yeah, and there's the question of just how much do you blitz Patrick Mahomes considering it's kind of what the Minnesota Vikings Don't. defense does? Don't. How, yeah. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea, but we, we like it because it's going to be points, and points are fun, especially for those of us in the fantasy football uh, community. The Jets at the Broncos, Nathaniel Hackett revenge game, both teams <laughs> sitting at one and three. I'm going to stray bond here. I'm going to take the Broncos all by myself. I have got Denver 25 wow. to 21 because Russell Wilson is playing very well this season. A lot of it has been obscured by the fact that their defense has not stopped anybody. The Dolphins still just scored again, but Russ throwing <laughs> on the move. Right now, the Broncos offense, the top 15 team passing against pressure. The Jets defense, number 29, uh, when the quarterback is able to get the ball off and, and throw a pass under pressure. Number 10 in long passing, number two in deep passing. It's maybe there was the, too much of a hate fest on, on Russ. He got a lot of the blame. Uh, it's not Russ's fault. It's not him, but look, the other sort of low key, not revenge, but maybe avenge situation here oh, is this is the game where Brees Hall last season got injured. Mm -hmm. So I think he goes up there and, you know, a mile high does like a mile run, right? So I think that's going to be a huge game for him because the Denver defense against the run has been giving up tons of expected points added per rush. So I think this is Brees Hall's ability to avenge his. It's wow. not revenge, but I don't know. I'm not good at it. would be great English. to see. I'm not doing yards. Yeah, he's running north of 5,200 feet. Uh, that's the prediction for Briggs Hall. Coming up here, yeah. uh, get a pen and paper because it's time to write this down. Our spicy, super spicy, bold predictions for week five are coming up next. YouTube TV is the new home of NFL Sunday ticket. Being an NFL fan has never been easier. Watch every game every Sunday exclusively with NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube TV. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, visit NFLSundayTicket.com. You got your pen? You got your paper? 
maybe a tablet device. It's time for write this down as we get to some week five predictions that we know are in fact going to happen. Greg, what is going to happen to you? Well, th these are the fantasy experts here. But back when I was in fantasy, I used to have everyone in the pool games, and that's Eagles Rams on Sunday. It's got to go over 50 and a half total points. I feel incredibly confident in this, and all the fantasy you know, points are going to be scored. Let's look at Devontae Smith, who I think should be in the slender but strong Hall of Fame. Okay. Slender but strong guy. I like, strong. He looks I like, like he's small, but oh. he's strong as an ox. Tyreek Hill would be in that one. I mean, mm -hmm. he, Jameson Williams is a good slender but strong. I mean, Greg Rosenthal would be another one. Exactly, uh, exactly. Look, he, he, he's not a big guy, but he can get these Rams cornerbacks. So I think it's a weakness in terms of this Rams defense. They can give up points, but they can keep up in the shootout. I like it. Yeah, I like, like it. that idea of, of them keeping up like the shootout. I just start all your Rams, start all your Eagles. Uh, my thing that you should write down, because uh, Daniel Jones has been accused of being sneakily athletic before. It's it's Again, it's a lie. It's a myth that doesn't exist. He's just plain all athletic. He will have 40 rushing yards against the Dolphins. He got sacked 11 billion times <laughs> the last time we saw him play a football game. I think Daniel Jones takes it into his own and has 40 rush yards, maybe more, playing against the Miami Dolphins. Hey, hey Parker. Parker, can you grab that helmet for me, please? Yeah, we, oh. yeah you need to bring it out here. Um, mine is that Gabe Davis is going to have a touchdown in London, but we need to have Parker, who it's her last day here, and she's a massive Bills fan. So, Parker, thank you for everything you've done. And you got to do, do my Gabe Davis one. Gabe, Gabe Davis. Davis? Gabe Davis a touchdown. Well, I love that we didn't tell Parker about this yeah, at all. Thanks, but one, one of the best parts uh, of this family, we wish you well. Yes. Thank you. Gabe Davis is going to score a touchdown. There it is. Write this down. Write it down. <laughs> okay, now player. you have you have 30 seconds to just you say whatever you want. Yeah, no, no. just I say. <laughs> we put Parker on the spot. We Again, put her on the spot. She crushed it. There, Thank there's you. There's so for many everything. people that make doing the show a possibility. Parker is mm -hmm. one of those people who has the, the team on her back, and we're gonna be rudderless uh, without her. We're gonna figure things out. Things go off the rail. Speaking of rudderless, like Parker. Greg is going to London. So we're going to have to figure out what, what we're going to do the, the next, next time we see you. But we're, we're not going to have Greg. We're still going to have some picks. Maybe Parker can just sit in. We can, like, rehire her <laughs> for a week. Congrats. I know you're going, but can you come back? <laughs> Bye, Parker. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week.